good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, for me to present uh, about this representation of SU2, SO3, and the Peter Whale theorem. I'm Intan Muhtadi from uh, Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia. So um, I will, before uh, I give the representation of SU2, maybe I will uh, read it. Um, review about tangent space first. So if uh, x uh, be an n-dimensional manifold and p a point, and then we define this uh, set of morphism from uh, minus epsilon epsilon uh, in R to x, where epsilon is positive and alpha zero is p. Uh, so this is uh, the set of morphism of manifolds from uh, minus epsilon epsilon to x, and this is called the set of differentiable curves on x to p, and the tangent space uh, t x p is defined as uh, this space uh, modulo this equivalent relation that um, we say the curve uh, alpha uh, equivalent to beta if uh, this uh, different uh, derivative at zero is equal to this derivative uh, at zero. And the uh, equivalent classes of alpha is denoted by this bracket alpha. So for example, no, okay, uh, and this uh, tangent space is an n-dimensional air vector space with uh, the uh, addition is defined uh, the equivalent class of alpha plus equivalent class of beta is the equivalent class of gamma if and only if uh, uh, satisfy this relation. So for example, um, when we try to compute the tangent space of uh, uh, GL and R, so we define this curve for uh, every A from minus epsilon epsilon to MNR from uh, T to 1 plus TA and uh, we can check that uh, this uh, equivalent class of Ka is invertible with inverse K minus A. So we have, we can so we have One plus T A times one minus T A. This is equal to one square minus T A uh, square, and this is one modulo T square. And uh, as uh, epsilon is small enough, so now we can say that this K A is invertible. With inverse the k minus a, so it means that k a is in uh, the k j n r at one. Then we can compute the k a uh, derivative of k a at zero. And this will give us A. So it means that Ka equivalent to Kb if and only if A equal to B. So then the tangent space for GL and R will be uh, modulo this equivalent relation will be the M and R.
The next example is um, actually what I will need later on is for the SU2, but I will explain first for ON and then SON and then SUN. So for ON, um, the tangent space of ON. And we consider uh, this uh, matrix of functions with a0 equal 1. Uh, what I mean by 1 here is uh, the identity matrix identity uh, 10001 and uh, satisfy 80 times 80 transpose equal 1. It means that 80 is an orthogonal matrix. And then define this Ka. to on when t goes to a t and then when we compute the derivative of this uh, sorry um, we have these properties that the derivative of a t transpose is the derivative of a t to write this transpose. So then um, when we compute um, how to erase When we differentiate this, we get a prime t times a t, uh, sorry, a t transpose plus a t, a t transpose prime. Oh, sorry, I get this wrong. No. Okay. And this is equal to a prime transpose. This is equal to zero. And at t equals zero, you will get that this is identity. And also, this is identity. So you get a prime t plus a t. Sorry, a prime zero plus a prime zero transpose equals zero. So this is uh, the tangent vector. X is this a prime zero. And now we have this X satisfy x plus x transpose equal 0. So that's how you get uh, the tangent space for ON. Uh, ON is not written here, but I will explain for the SON and then SUN. So this is for ON. Now for S or N, we will need to define for any X uh, N by N matrices. Um, e power X is like the uh, series of E power X. 
the sum from n equals zero to infinity one over n factorial x power n and we will need this to get the tangent space of SON um, So first we start with uh, matrix X satisfy X transpose plus X equals zero. And we define, uh, so this K should go with. So the curve was defined going from minus epsilon epsilon to x. So in this case, this k is going from, well, sorry, kx from epsilon minus epsilon epsilon to son. And we will send this to e power tx. Uh, but first, we will need to show that e power tx is in son. So, um, and we can check that this matrix ex transpose is the e power x transpose and also x transpose plus x equals zero means x transpose equal minus x. So it means e power x times e power x transpose equal to e power x plus x transpose, sorry, transpose. So this is one. It means e power x is in on, okay? And we also have for all um, okay, I will write it here, but I will not give the uh, proof. So for all complex matrices A, you can check that the determinant of E power A is the same as E power uh, trace of A. And so in order to see that e power tx is in SON, we need to compute the determinant of e power tx. So the determinant of e power tx. Oh, okay, I think I forgot something. No? Yes, um, I will skip. One more little detail. So after e power x in on, we also see that for all the x, um, for all t, the x plus the x transpose equal to t 
x plus x transpose and this is also zero. So k e power tx also in on. And the determinant of e power tx by that formula is equal to e power tr uh, trace of xt. And the trace of matrix xt is the same as t times uh, trace of x, but um, uh, for wait a minute. Okay, since because of this property, so we'll get the trace of x is zero. So the determinant here is one. So e power t x is in S O N. So therefore, when we compute the derivative of e power t x, we will get x times e power t x. And for t equals zero, this will be x. Uh, so we can conclude that for son for son um, the tangent space consisting of the matrix which satisfy uh, a transpose equal minus a and for sun you change this transpose with the conjugate transpose a star so with the same method that we have done for son we will get for su okay su2 <laughs> um, this change to a uh, star but then uh, when we have a star equal to minus a uh, doesn't necessarily mean the trace is zero so we also need to add uh, that in the tangent space the matrix with trace zero and satisfy a star equal to minus a so for the SU with the same method we can get this but then this is star um, this is SU and for the determinant this is not directly um, for the determinant so for so um, for e power x in S U N. It means that the determinant of e power x is one, but this was e power uh, trace of uh, x, and conclusion the trace of x should be zero.
Okay, I will continue to um, define this function, uh, derivative function, for the uh, from the tangent space uh, of x at the point x to the tangent space of y at the point f x, and this is defined as the equivalent class of alpha going to the equivalent class of f uh, composition with alpha. And um, I think uh, Bas already defined Lie group, and also um, Lie algebra. But uh, the point what I want to say here uh, that a Lie group give a, a natural way a Lie algebra via the tangent space of uh, Tg at point one. So we will use that letter. And uh, since I will talk about uh, representation, this is one of them. And uh, fortunately, my talk was pr proceed by the about representation. So um, this is. Uh, I will explain a little bit about this first. So we have this map from G to G uh, that sending uh, H to G H G in first. This is an automorphism of G. And the derivative of this function at 1 uh, so the derivative goes from the tangent of G at point 1 to the tangent uh, at point psi G at 1 because this psi g is from g to g. Uh, but we have seen uh, that this tg is the Lie algebra of g. And this is also tg1 and this sending alpha to psi g composition with alpha. And we can check that um, it has an inverse d uh, psi g inverse at 1. So this psi g 1 is in automorphism of uh, G. So we can define this function add from G to out of G. Sending G to this um, derivative. And this is called the adjoint representation of G. Um, you can check later on the uh, session, training session, that this gives a representation of G. Uh, let us see the definition of a representation. So here, uh, a representation is a pair V and uh, phi. Uh, v is a K vector space, and phi is a group homomorphism from G to the automorphism of V. 
or GLB. But uh, for GLE group, there is an addition that the representation of the Lie group is also uh, given by phi should be a morphism of Lie groups. And then uh, there is a so-called morphism of representation from uh, V to V prime, and this should satisfy uh, F of uh, GV equal to GFV. And a representation V and V prime are isomorphic if there exists an isomorphism between them. So maybe well, first question for your training session later on. <laughs> so show that this is uh, Uh, representation of G. And um, after a choice of a basis of V, so GLV can be identified to the GLN R or C, and uh, phi of G will be a group of matrices. Now, about the representation of SU2. Oh, okay. One more uh, important thing is uh, the definition of irreducible uh, representation. Uh, v has precisely two subspaces that are invariant under the action of G, and these two subspaces are 0 and V. Uh, the representation of SU2 is given by this factor space of homogeneous polynomial in two variables of the degree D. And an element of CXYD is uh, given by this polynomial where uh, the um, what do you call this, uh, the sum of degree is D. Like um, the degree of X plus the degree for Y and you get D. Homogeneous of degree D. Uh, homogeneous of degree D. Uh, it's already written there actually. <laughs> That's what it means by homogeneous of degree D. It means um, when you have uh, here um, degree zero, this should be degree D, this one degree uh, D minus one, this one should be degree one, and this zero, and this is D. And now we will show that this factor space is a representation of SU2 with this the, the, uh, definition. So basically, we will show that this is um, morphism of groups. So the, this is the definition. And um, you take, uh, so, uh, to U1 and U2. And you compute the phi of U1, U2. Maybe you should get a okay. Yeah, uh, I think I have one there. And by definition, this is F of U1, U2 
inverse at x, y. And you will get f of u2 inverse u1 inverse x, y. And this is um, phi wait, uh, u, um, no, uh, u2 first, OK. Phi u2 of f u inverse x, y. And then this is phi u2 phi u1 of f x, y. Uh, I made a mistake. I think you want them in the order. Oh, yes. But, uh, uh, wait. Actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, you can change that to the one. <laughs> Yeah, uh, going this one. Okay. How the XY is more yeah, yeah. Right. Okay, let me check. Yes, uh, yeah. I should get this first. Yeah, um, well, it depends on how you want it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, what we want to see is that this representation is irreducible. And for that, we will need the tangent space of SU2. We have seen earlier uh, the Lie algebra of SU2 is uh, given by this where uh, matrices A, where the trace is zero, and satisfy A star equal minus A. And now let V in C, X, Y, D, uh, subspace of this, uh, which is non-zero and invariant under the action of SU2. Uh, but first, uh, notice that the SU2 is uh, spanned by this matrix I, J, and K. If you want, um, this can also be a um, question for your training session. Uh, now, the action of We have the action phi from SU2 to GL of CXYD 
and this action if we take the derivative we will get d phi at 1 and call it phi prime going from SU2 to from uh, GL this will go to the endomorphism of CXYD and this is given by A going to these equivalent classes of phi of 1 plus the A. So remember again that um, we have when we define the derivative of GLN uh, we use this um, curve 1 plus the A uh, and uh, so we also have this definition of derivative so this is the uh, F composition with alpha so this was the alpha this is the F and the derivative of phi will be this A going to uh, phi of 1 plus ta and we can compute uh, on fz here fz is uh, uh, think as a function of two variable from x y to uh, c and we have this and um, for particular A which are the generators here I, J and K we can compute all uh, and also for fz, uh, particular fz uh, x power a, y power b. So we will have this of x power a, y power b. And we can compute this and we get okay I will just go directly to the result this is for I Maybe I will write uh, how do I get this. This is from here. Uh, this is x a y b, and then one minus t i of x y. This is the uh, phi, and this is this one. And for a equal j. for a equal k and 
and all of them uh, modulo t square. And then compute the phi prime for For the phi prime of this, we will get this side. So this is I B minus A X A Y B and uh, quite long here. Um, okay, I will write it anyway. And you can check uh, whether it's correct. But um, what we will use is This one, we compute uh, one over two b of phi prime j plus i phi prime k of x power a y power b, and this special one give us like shifting. Uh, a to a plus one and shifting b to minus one and the other one uh, no i i prime k minus phi prime j and this one will shift a to the uh, minus one, a minus one, and b plus one, and then um, doing this several times, it will shift this a to a plus two, b minus two, and so on, until at the end we will get that x i y d i minus i. And this will be in V. Okay? So it means that the, after doing this uh, action and then um, on um, uh, on the GL of this, but doing it in the tangent spaces, we see that um, for V element V, where V is written as V D X D until V zero y power d. So this is like each of them in v, so, uh, but this is in cx, y, d. So it means um, cx, y, d has no other invariant subspace than 0 and itself. So how much? Do I still have time? Five minutes? <laughs> and um, I don't think I will have time to explain for the representation of SO3. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow. But um, the point is, so tomorrow we will see uh, the isomorphism between SU2 to uh, SO3 with kernel one and minus one. And by using this isomorphism, 
we will uh, consider which in uh, CXYD that become representation of SO3. Thank you very much. <laughs>